You might have seen this news. Apparently, the world needs to spend $12 trillion, or more than $12 trillion between now and 2030 in order to basically save ourselves. This is a little bit misleading. I'm going to tell you why. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to see you. Thank you for tuning in. Within the last few weeks, diesel generators here in Australia have been forced to close. They are no longer financially viable. Um, big mega battery packs have forced them to shut down. And the same thing has happened to coal power plants. I'm talking pika plants here. The same thing has happened to fossil fuel power plants in many countries worldwide. So renewable energy, well, yes, there is an upfront cost, is much cheaper to own and run. The reality here is this, there are many power plants worldwide that between now and 2030 will become completely obsolete, old, loss making, they're already making a loss today. So this figure of 12 trillion US dollars that they say is needed is not really indicative of what needs to happen. It's not just some figure here that needs to be spent in order to make some drastic change. A lot of this money has to be spent regardless. Now, if many countries worldwide said, no, 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 we don't want to spend anything and we don't want to do renewables, rah, rah, rah. Well, the thing is, they wouldn't have much choice because there's many power plants that are just simply getting to that point where they need billions of dollars spent on them in order to continue running. And in fact, many of them are just making big losses currently. Coal power plants have to run at a minimum of 65% operation or in order to make a profit. That's the industry average worldwide. Many of them are not running at that number. And the reason is because of solar, wind, batteries that are disrupting them. So this figure, it needs to be, well, sort of taken with a grain of salt. That said, over the next six years, it's estimated $12 trillion need to be spent on grid infrastructure and renewables if we can meet, for us to meet the climate target set at last year's COP28 conference. Now, this is according to a new study. Climate analytics think tank says, that the US eight trillion needs to be spent on the actual um, oper the actual panels and the wind turbines and the batteries themselves, but another US four trillion needs to be spent on grid infrastructure to support it. So it's worth keeping in mind the infrastructure, the grid infrastructure is necessary. Now the grid infrastructure is not as necessary. I mean that number can decrease significantly if you install solar on your roof. Grid infrastructure is very, very good um, at actually having solar send power out to the grid. If it's already connected to your house, um, it's not a big deal for this to happen. And very little money needs to be spent to make that happen. So my suggestion is for us to play our part in this and reduce that, that 12 trillion down by possibly billions of dollars, it's install solar on your roof. Anyway, this figure does equate to $2 trillion a year and that would mean that approximately double needs to be spent next year versus what was spent last year or this year versus last year. Climate Analytics says around US $6.6 .6 billion of investment considered locked in from 2024 to 2030, meaning there's a massive shortfall. A lot more needs to be spent. A lot more money needs to be invested. Two trillion a year sounds like a cost, but it's really a choice, said climate analytics expert, Dr. Neil Grant, who is the lead author of the report. We're set to invest over six trillion in fossil fuels this decade. Six trillion, more than enough to close the tripling investment gap. Faced with this choice, I'd go with the safest, best value option, renewable energy. So unfortunately, there are a number of countries worldwide that are still investing money into fossil fuels. Um, it's massive, the number when you actually see it. Neweconomy.com.au, who actually published this study and information about it, said that the study notes that to have a chance of meeting the agreed Paris target of capping average global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius, a level it has already gone past, at least on a short time scale, the world needs to install 8 terawatts of new renewable energy to take the total capacity to 11.5. Climate Analytics says half of this eight terawatts of new renewable energy capacity will come from Asia, mostly China and India. And it's true, China is investing more into renewables than, well, actually than the rest of the world combined. It could actually happen when you consider that. 
However, the spree of coal-fired power plant construction in China and India is a huge concern, said the report. If this continues, it will jeopardize a 1.5 degree Celsius aligned power sector transition or create large scale stranded assets. So a lot of people are thinking, why is China building coal power plants? Why have they been doing this? Well, realistically, the reason is manufacturing. China actually has enough solar, just solar, to power every single home and apartment in the entire country for its more than 1.3 billion people. Now that's just 100% factual information. I'm not some sort of CCP shill, it's just the truth. But because China is manufacturing more and more of the world's goods, it doesn't have enough energy for these manufacturing facilities. So whilst China is installing more renewables than the rest of the world combined, it's just consuming insane amounts of power. OECD countries, which for the purpose of this study include Australia, will provide just over one third of new renewable capacity, but will need a ramp up of current policies, particularly in countries such as Japan and probably also the United States. There is a gap of 2.2 terawatt between current forecasts for renewable spending and the 1.5 degree Celsius compatible benchmark. However, as the pace of renewable deployment continues to accelerate, mostly due to much cheaper solar panels, much cheaper batteries, and the acceleration of wind farms, the gap could feasibly be closed by 2030. This would require renewables to grow 70% faster over 2022 to 2030 than they did over the last eight years. This is necessary, but I think the problem here is this, the world is getting distracted by nuclear. Now nuclear sounds great, and you know nuclear power plants can work really well, but they take a long time to build. Generally, they run over time by five to 12 years. That's the global average. And the global average is that they run over cost by a minimum of 50% and in many cases, 90%. It's very common. The nuclear park being built in the UK right now has gone over budget by $30 billion and is on, on course to be about 10 years over time. Now, if we were to just wait for all these new nuclear power plants that are planned in Europe, well, we have no chance of hitting these targets. But if we were to just start building out a lot more renewables in these countries, like what's happened in Germany and Australia recently, then we absolutely can do it. And that's why I think the distraction on nuclear is actually causing some of the biggest delays and challenges into achieving what we need to do in order for the world to um, not have catastrophic issues. What are your thoughts? Thanks for watching.